And good afternoon YouTube. So this is the engine compartment on my 85 Toyota 4Runner from the factory. Used to be a battery right here and I moved the battery someplace else so I could put my airflow sensor and air cleaner which is underneath there and the reason I did that is you probably can't see it but I'll uh, cut in a picture of the modification I did. I actually have my air intake running up inside the fender and then it actually picks up air from inside of the cowl where the intake for the uh, ventilation fan and heater comes in. So that way it keeps the water out if, if you're doing deep water crossing. That's where the battery used to be. And then over here, that's my Premier Power Welder controller. It's a little bit dirty right now. I've got to get that cleaned up. You can do charging. It's got the voltage regulator right here for the alternator. You can put out 110 volt DC to run power tools. And you can also plug in welding leads there and get up to 160 amps welding with this. So that's where the air cleaner used to be. And that's where the battery used to be. And otherwise, there's no battery up here. So let me show you where my battery was moved to. Yeah, so here we are underneath the truck. Here's the uh, recess for the rear seats on the Forerunner. And then this is the gas tank. There are my battery cables. I actually have dual batteries in here. And I just had to pull them out because one of them, it's been weak the last year. And I finally decided to replace it. So a long time ago, I drilled a couple of holes. If you can see, there's a hole there, there. And then there's a couple of holes over there and I have a cage that bolts up underneath the uh, rear seat compartment. That's where the rear seat is. This is the footwell for the rear seat. And I have my batteries mounted there. And I think there were two things that caused the one battery to fail. One is I changed my muffler and this muffler hangs down a bit farther than the, the old muffler. And I think I got a little too much heat with the muffler being closer. It was normally up inside the uh, heat shield. So one thing I've done, I've extended the heat shield and I'll show you what that looks like. And then I'll show you a modification I'm doing on the battery tray to try to cut down on the heat. The other thing I think that was the main cause of the battery going out was my alternator had some bad diodes and I think that was draining the battery overnight and then it wasn't charging it very well the next day. So this is the modification I did to the muffler heat shield. I added some uh, aluminum that I had. This was left over from my in-window solar heater project and I stuck those pieces together and then pop riveted them to this heat shield and that heat shield goes right up here and it kind of covers the muffler and the idea is this heat shield keeps the muffler heat from coming up through the floor and my old muffler used to run down here. I had kind of a cylindrical muffler but I changed out to this muffler which sticks down quite a bit farther and the battery is right about where my hand is and I think the heat got to it. Yeah and then this is the battery tray I built. I built this probably about 18 years ago and it's all uh, built out of angle, uh, welded together. I did this in my old welding class that I took back in uh, probably 98 or so. So I built this tray and it holds two of these uh, Odyssey batteries and then that's the uh, top piece. And so I'm putting the heat shield on the side and then I thought what I would do 
is I've got some of this Reflectix foam insulation. I think what I'll do is put a sheet of that in the bottom. So I've got two of these cut. I've got to put one under this. This was the battery I put in a couple of years ago. And there you can see the part number. It's, this was the third set. So I put a set in back around 1998 or 9. And then around 2007, I swapped them out once. And then in 2014, I put this battery in, plus the one that was here. And then in about two years, this one died. This is the main starting battery. And this is my auxiliary battery. So this battery here is still in good shape. It, it runs just fine. This battery had been weakened, I think, between the heat and also the uh, alternator going bad. And there we go. We got the new battery in. I got this from Battery Mart. It's about $132 for this. Yeah, the other thing I need to check here is I've got to check my voltage on the regulator of my Premier Power Welder. So I need to also make a note of the charging voltage. Same uh, specs, 28 amp hours. Again, they're not a super high capacity, but I have two of them. So I can run this one till it's dead, and then I can switch over to this one, or uh, I can run them both in parallel. Yeah, I've been running over a year with a dead battery, and really didn't cause any problems. <laughs> you just flip a switch and you can start the vehicle up. Okay YouTube, we're getting the batteries back in place. I've got the four cables bolted on top. I have to lift the battery up pretty close because I don't have a lot of extra cable length there. And so I got the plus and minus on both batteries. And then I've got the thing stacked up on top of a floor jack. And I find this is, gives me just enough height. I've got like a 4x6 wooden block and then a can of paint and the battery is balanced on top of that. So now all I have to do is uh, raise the jack up and get everything maneuvered into position and get the four studs up through the hole in the floor. Yeah, there we go. I'll show you what it looks like when I get them all bolted up into place. Okay, there we go. YouTube got the batteries back in there. When I put them up, what I did was put the uh, four studs in place, put the bottom nuts on all four corners, and then with my floor jack, I was able to lift it up and get the back two studs up through the floor and get those nuts on to hold it in place. And then what I had to do my jack was maxed out as far as how high it would lift. So what I had to do was put, lift the front of the batteries up and then slide a wedge under that front end to get the front studs up through the floor since they're a little bit higher. And then I got those nuts put on, tightened everything down. And as you can see here, I've got the heat insulation on the bottom. I've got the front and then you can just barely see the piece I put on the side and then I've got my extended heat shield so that should keep the batteries a lot uh, cooler hoping that'll let them last a lot longer and then I got my drive shaft back in after I got the rear differential uh, repaired so that that'll be another video so that's why I decided to do the batteries because I had the drive shaft out so yeah, I just wanted to show you the uh, dual batteries. These have been in about 18 years, as I recall, maybe 19 years. Uh, the first set, I got about nine years out of the batteries. The second set, I got about uh, seven years. And then the front one here, I only got about two years of use out of it before it, it uh, went weak it would basically drop down to about 11 volts overnight, 11.7. And if you let it sit for maybe three or four days, it would be down in the 10 volt range. It still would crank the engine over, but the voltage would really drop. And then periodically I had to use the uh, auxiliary battery for a jump start. But yeah, other than that, everything is back in place. And I hope I don't have to touch these for maybe another 10 years if I uh, 
get lucky here. What, one thing I'm going to do, I'll, I'll do a separate video, is I want to add a uh, battery monitor to monitor the charging and discharging of these batteries. And then I can see if there's any drain on the batteries overnight. So I'll be putting that up in front. I've got to do a little bit of wiring and running the cables, but that's uh, something I want to do to monitor these a little bit better. And I can also watch the charging voltage and then the resting voltage and all that. The front one is brand new, the back one is about three years old, and uh, we'll see how they work with the added insulation. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the dual batteries back in place. They work really well up here. They're very well protected out of, uh, out of harm's way. Nothing can really get to them up there. Anyway, if you have any questions about the uh, setup, post up in the comments section below. I'll put a couple of videos over here on the side you might be interested in. And as always, thanks for watching.